Hello and welcome to Kitty Nero Diaries on the 5th of March. Um, welcome to those who've watched the channel before, uh, but especially to those who have uh, recently subscribed. Uh, thanks very much for your support. So, um, 10 days from now, and I would have owned the e Nero for five years, and I'll be talking about that come the time, because uh, it's on about 97,000 kilometres now, not quite on the 100,000 yet. So, anyway, what I want to talk about today is, uh, is all to do with numbers and statistics and car sales and stuff like this. So, if you don't like that kind of thing, this probably isn't for you, but it's all to do with the question of um, the effect that EV sales are having on reducing the amount of fossil fuels we use, which obviously means that, our, you know, it begs the question, is the number of uh, petrol and diesel cars, fossil fuel cars, uh, going down? Well, there's lots of data around on um, car sales. Um, you can find those from uh, independent analysts as well as um, industry bodies that uh, are around and obviously <clears throat> the question of um, electric vehicles replacing internal combustion engine vehicles at a global level is quite complex. Yes there are lots of sales data on car sales globally but to work out uh, how many are being scrapped every year is a little bit more difficult but if we take France as a country and of course France is a mature market like the UK and like many you know developed countries um, you know car sales they creep up but they don't zoom and boom like say they do in China or uh, India where you know car sales are really beginning to pick up now so the rise in electric vehicle sales is beginning to affect and drive down the number of internal combustion engine vehicles on our roads. So uh, we've just taken a look at this chart here where um, so you can see the annual car sales in France starting in 2015 as 1.92 million and then growing slightly in 2016, 17, 18 and 2019 was a very good year <clears throat> and it was the year before the um, the, the COVID where all the lockdowns meant that uh, showrooms and factories were not uh, running and uh, it dropped right down there. I guess that was half a million or more less, sorry, half a million less were sold in 2020 than were sold in 2019. So then on the next line, you can see the car population, which is also something that's well documented. There's lots of data kicking around on that. So that at the end of every year, they tell you how many uh, cars are registered to be on the road in France and you can see that creeping up from 36.63 million in 2015 up to uh, 38.86 million. So over nine years we've got good sales data which tell us that uh, seven, just over 17 million cars, new cars were sold in France. Um, but we also have the data for how many cars are actually registered to be on the road. So obviously um, the number of cars that have been scrapped or gone into just not being used, no longer registered, um, is uh, the total sales um, minus the increase in the number of cars on the road, which leaves us with 14.81 million vehicles have been scrapped. Now, my theory is, and I think this is fairly reasonable, that scrappage rates are more consistent than sales rates. I mean, sales depends on many things, the state of the economy, um, how people feel that they can buy a new car. They're very lucky to be able to do that. I've only done it once in my life with my own money, and that was the e Nero. Um, and uh, obviously, things like interest rates, um, what special deals are being, you know, how much new car sales are being promoted by the manufacturers. Um, whereas with scrappage, um, you've, got a, you've got a base there of cars that are out there on the road and they reach the end of their life. They fail their, as we call in France, a control technique, which is like the MOT in, in um, the UK, or, or, or they just become too expensive to repair than, you know, their, you know, their second-hand value is... Uh, um, lower than the cost to keep them on the road. So, you know, that's a fairly consistent um, number. So what I've done here, I've taken the liberty of saying, okay, we've got nine years. We've, we know that um, 
by you know by definition 14.81 million or thereabouts uh, cars have been scrapped in France and from that we get an average annual scrappage rate of just under 1.65 million okay so while all this is going on of course we've got the electric um, vehicle battery electric vehicles only here I've listed not plug-in hybrids and uh, in 2015 uh, you see there were just over 22,000 sold and then it's creeping up and obviously there weren't so many EVs available at that time um, there were um, you know the Nissan Leaf the Renault Zoe um, and then as time goes on we get more choice and by 2018 40,000 2019 when I bought the e Nero, and, but it was still you know just sort of creeping up about 10,000 every year and then in 2020 when actually um, car sales generally dropped quite a lot because of COVID um, EV sales just about doubled and I think that was when you know Tesla Model 3 was really getting into production um, in you know big volumes and and there were a lot more models coming from um, you know Peugeot, Citroen, Fiat um, and, and of course you know Koreans and at that point not the Chinese but since then things have been creeping up quite steadily I mean you know we, we, we've seen big jumps in EV sales from 2021, 22 and then last year in 2023 just under 300,000 Having established, um, you know, what the annual uh, new car sales uh, figures have been in France the last nine years, and what the car population has done, how it's grown um, over that period of time, uh, I think the next thing I did was to look at um, the um, car sales by fuel type. So if we look at this chart here, um, I've broken out petrol and diesel, and all this data is available and the only sort of discrepancies in the data that I've seen are that some analysts talk about light duty vehicles which includes vans and other analysts only talk about cars and I'm just talking about cars here um, in fact um, thinking again about the number of cars on the road in France um, which is roughly the same as I think is what it is in the UK which is about 38 million and if you add um, light light vans, you know, the, the sort of transit vans and, and, and the smaller uh, panel vans, um, it, it, it's about 40 million vehicles. So, uh, on you know, light duty vehicles on the roads, but this is just cars. So uh, 2019, which is a very good year for sales, we saw uh, petrol uh, sales were uh, 1.2 million and, and, and diesel, which um, you know, despite the Dieselgate scandal, was seven hundred fifty-five thousand. Now, France at one point, if you go back to twenty fifteen, I haven't bothered putting the data up for that, but um, at one point, diesel sales were even greater in France than petrol sales. But with the uh, restrictions of uh, use of diesels in Paris, and obviously the Dieselgate scandal, and I think buyers can see the writing on the wall um, that uh, you know diesels were going to go out of favor um, in terms of legislation and obviously um, you know they're just not very nice um, the uh, 755,000 figure there you see for 2019 was about a third of total sales and by the time you get to 2023 there's only 171,000 new diesel cars being sold which is just under 10 percent it's about 9.2 percent we're at now so what i did here then was i added the petrol and the diesel sales um so we get a for 2019 we can see just over 2 million new petrol and diesel cars were sold and then what i do is i subtract from that the average annual scrappage rates which i've used the same numbers for every year because as i say i think it's a fairly reliable metric that we can use so um, total number of new petrol and diesel cars on the road minus the 1.65 million it means that we still had an additional uh, 387,000 um, internal combustion engine or pure petrol and diesel cars added uh, onto the roads um, and of course there were hybrids as well which you can see in the breakdown there but in 2020, when electric vehicle sales, battery electric vehicle sales doubled, uh, we see a big change. So obviously, the 2020 was the COVID year, so only 
1.65 million or so cars were, were sold. And if you sub look at the total number of petrol and diesel cars, subtract the scrappage rates. Sorry, my cat just jumped on the table there. So if you look at, if you look at the total petrol and diesel sales in 2020, um, and you subtract the scrappage rates, you get a negative 371,000. So on average, and this is probably didn't happen quite that way, but on average, you'd have lost, um, you know, 371,439 less um, petrol and diesel cars would have been on French roads by the end of that. But of course, um, battery electric vehicles aren't the only new type of car that are selling. Uh, you've got hybrids as well, uh, which even in 2020 were selling about a quarter of a million. You see the growth there of hybrids. Um, so obviously they've still got an internal combustion engine in them, but um, you know they, they are obviously newer cars and they use less fuel. Plug-in hybrid, the same. But if you actually add those... Um, sales back in uh, for 2020, uh, you are still 53,171 less um, uh, petrol or diesel burning cars on the roads of France during that year. Obviously, the vast amount of the scrappage is petrol or diesel. I mean, battery electric vehicles are too new. The only ones that you'll lose off the road are where they're lost in accidents. And, and written off. Likewise, plug-in hybrids are also too new. Um, you won't get many of those being scrapped. And hybrids, well, they've been around almost 20 years now with the you know, second generation of Toyota, Prius. The, 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 you know, some of those are coming up to 20 years old. Um, but really, hybrids haven't really taken off as a, as a vehicle type until the last sort of six or seven years when other companies other than Toyota, started doing hybrids as well. And you can see the, how they've grown very, very rapidly, hybrid sales. So not many of those are going to be in, in our scrappage total. Most of the stuff being scrapped are just pure petrol and diesel burners. So we go on to 2021, and again, um, car sales were still quite low, but again, using the average scrappage rate because you've got that base of vehicles there. They've been there for 10, 12, 15 years. I think the average car in France gets scrapped after 16, 17 years or something. So you know that the majority of those being scrapped, again, are going to be petrol and diesel. But petrol plus diesel sales fell again in 2021, down to just over a million. Subtract the annual scrappage rate and you lose 633,000 um petrol and diesel cars, plug-in hybrid. In 2022, well, it's really carnage by then for pure petrol and diesel because sales have dropped below a million, only 807,000, 808,000. Actually, they, they rose slightly in 2023, but then again, the total car market in France expanded uh, as, as, I showed on the, as I showed on the first um, chart there where uh, car sales in 2022 were at 1.53 million, and in 2023 they rose by about 250,000 to 1.77 million. But you're still in the situation where um, a lot more petrol and diesel cars are being scrapped than new ones coming on onto the roads. Um, so anyway, that's fairly conclusive, I think. Um, obviously. Um, how it's going to go from here. Well, it's only going to go one way. There's going to be more battery electric vehicles sold this year. I think it's not going to be quite a spectacular growth, perhaps, but we've got new models like the Renault 5, the Citroën EC3. Certainly, you know, the, the French tend to buy those size of cars, and we've been waiting for smaller, cheaper um, electric vehicles to come onto the market. And, and then, of course, you've got also... Um, Hyundai Kona is starting to sell well now, the new Kona, the Volvo EX30, the Renault Scenic E-Tech, which just won the car of the year. Um, so those, those kind of cars, you know, French like to buy French cars. So I would expect to see somewhere between 350,000 and 400,000 battery electric vehicles. I guess plug-in hybrids are, are going to continue to grow, not at the same rate as battery electric, but they're going to, again, eat into the um, 
you know, the sales of, of, of pure petrol and, and, and diesel. So I think we can say that we've got a long way to go. It's probably going to take another 15 years or maybe 15 to 20 years to get rid of all the petrol and diesel um, burning cars. And we're still going to have, obviously, hybrids and plug-in hybrids sort of hanging around. But I think, you know, 10 years from now and, uh, you know, the kind of cars we've got on the roads are going to look very, very different. Um, the use of uh, fossil fuels is going to be massively reduced, here, but it's, it's gradually going in the right direction now. And it's great because obviously we want to see a lot less of this. OK, well, I hope you found that interesting. So it was a bit stato uh, and stuff, but I, I like to do that. I'm a retired guy now, but when I was working, I used to be a product manager and an industry analyst. And uh, I used to enjoy, you know, playing around with spreadsheets and numbers and trying to work out the way things were going. Um, I didn't always get it right by a long way, but, but you know, it, I find it quite interesting. Anyway, um, so yeah, thanks for watching. If you stuck with me for this long, um, until the next time.